Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am General Novel. This edition's top story. The Prime Minister assures that the state of emergency does not hinder upcoming general elections. The Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labour is mobilizing its response mechanism as the hurricane season approaches. And the spotlight is placed on football as the football task force is soon to be re-established. Prime Minister the Honourable Alan Chastney has made it categorically clear that the state of emergency extension to October 16, 2021 will not hinder the nation's general election. During a sitting of Parliament on May 4, 2021, the House of Assembly approved a five-month extension beginning 17 May, running into the final quarter of the year. With elections constitutionally due by October, the Prime Minister maintained that the state of emergency does not impede processes for this national exercise. He says, however, that he looks forward to the national exercise being conducted safely with respect to the COVID-19 pandemic. How is the state of the emergency going to stop the election from taking place, Mr. Speaker? Since when a state of emergency affects it? When in St. Kitts they had a state of emergency, did it affect them in having an election? When Jamaica had a state of emergency, did it affect them having an election? When Trinidad and Tobago had elections with a state of emergency, did it affect them having an election, Mr. Speaker? The answer is no. Categorically. Okay, Mr. Speaker, it does not impede the ability to have an election. One of the critical decisions that, that has been, and I have been saying it repeatedly, to bring some relief to the members on the opposite side, that is going to guide the decision as to when we're going to have elections, is certainly, Mr. Speaker, when we believe that we can have the elections in the safest way possible. But, I've said repeatedly, we are not in any way going to go contrary to the Constitution of St. Lucia. According to the Constitution of St. Lucia, the state of emergency may be revoked during the five-month period at the discretion of the Governor-General that could allow for a general election. The government intends to come to an agreement with the opposition on COVID-19 protocols for the impending national exercise. It's certainly my government's intention to make sure that we will work with the members on the opposite side, with arbitrary independent people, to make sure that we can have a very clear idea that once we are going to have elections, what the protocols would be, and that hopefully both sides will fulfill their obligation and commitment to adhering to them. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shastney is speaking during a sitting of the House of Assembly on Tuesday, May 4, 2021. During the sitting of the House of Assembly on Tuesday, Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Economic Growth, Job Creation, External Affairs and the Public Service, Honorable Alan Chastney, explained that the COVID-19 situation in St. Lucia remains fluid and managing the virus continues to prove challenging. Adding to the challenges are the increasing variants of the virus and other changes locally, regionally and internationally. This, he noted, contributes to the complexity in the management of the virus. Honorable Chastney added that with this reality, the country cannot become complacent and the necessary steps must be taken to ensure health and safety. As part of efforts to combat the spread of the virus, the Prime Minister sought the extension of the state of emergency for an additional period of five months from the 17th of May 2021 to the 16th of October 2021. Speaker, you remember that I've often made reference to a dimmer switch rather than to an on-off switch. And that practice continues. As we see COVID numbers decreasing, then we can increase the activities. As we see the COVID cases reducing, then we can increase the number of activities. Want to remember that we passed the COVID Act, Mr. Speaker, in order to incorporate most of the protocols that we are using under legislation. The only aspect of the COVID protocols that cannot be done under the COVID Act, Mr. Speaker, is in fact the curfew. Curfew can only be instituted through a state of emergency. Those, as I said, vaccination offers great hope, and I am optimistic that we will effectively turn the corner and the page on the pandemic this year. 
We cannot yet let our guard down. Not until St. Lucia and indeed most other countries from which we receive tourists are much closer to achieving herd immunity. Through the contact tracing process, we know that the transmission of COVID-19 is greater during social activities. The state of emergency facilitates the imposition of the curfew, which curbs the nighttime socialization documented to effectively control COVID-19 escalation. Undoubtedly, the current situation in Anguilla and India serve as a stark reminder of how quickly the situation can change and become dire. Honorable Shasni explained that while the vaccine brings some level of hope to the grim reality of COVID-19, the country remains at risk to the virus and its negative effects. That is, until herd immunity can be achieved. It is therefore necessary that individuals get vaccinated and all precautions are taken to protect the citizenry. In an effort to ensure the safety of the citizenry, the state of emergency needs to be extended to allow for and to provide for any change in the dynamics of the spread of the virus. Mr. Speaker, until we reach herd immunity, we will remain exposed to an outbreak. It does not take much to turn the corner. There remains a continuing threat to the health of the population. This will allow action to be taken with immediate dispatch on the advice of the chief medical officer where there is a need to take essential and urgent measures. The Prime Minister added that the state of emergency has thus far proven effective as the island recorded a significant reduction in active COVID-19 cases. While I am sure that many persons have grown somewhat fatigued, just as I have, with the curb that this state of affairs brought by the pandemic has imposed on regular social life and movement, I am pleased to note that we have over the past two months seen a gradual decline in the number of active cases. As a consequence, we have begun the phased relaxation of restrictions. Further, I have on many occasions reiterated the importance of St. Lucia reopening our economy and getting our people back to work. Indeed, the interconnected nature of our economy with the international trade and travel makes this not only inevitable, but vital. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shastney speaking there at Tuesday's sitting of the House of Assembly. The Ministry of Health and Wellness encourages members of the public to get vaccinated and its vaccination campaign continues. The public is informed that during the week of Monday, May 3, 2021 to Saturday, May 8, 2021, the COVID-19 vaccination drive will cater to the general population for the first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, as well as those receiving the second dose of the vaccine. Individuals who received the first dose of the vaccine during the week of March 8, 2021 to March 13, 2021 are encouraged to visit the vaccination site nearest to them during the upcoming week to receive the second dose. Individuals receiving the second dose of the vaccine should also walk with the vaccination card, which was given when the first dose of the vaccine was administered. People are asked to walk with a form of identification to facilitate the registration process. It is also recommended to come with a light snack and water given the possibility of a waiting time to get vaccinated. The vaccination sites will be operational from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. The vaccination sites for the week are as follows. Thursday, May 6, 2021, Miku Multipurpose Center, Darren Sami Cricket Grounds, Entry for Human Resource Center, and Surrey Parish Center. Friday, May 7, 2021, Philip Maslake Grounds, Darren Sami Cricket Grounds, VG Sports Complex, Barbono Multipurpose Center, Canris Wellness Center, Sufre Hospital Grounds, Jack Mel Wellness Center. Saturday, May 8, 2021, VG Sports Complex. For more information, please contact the Community Nursing Service at 468-5321 or 468-5381. With the Atlantic hurricane season approaching, the Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor is mobilizing its response mechanism. The hurricane season is the period from June to November, during which hurricanes usually form in the Atlantic Ocean. 
Shannon Labon is the communications officer in the Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor. So our various um, zonal engineers, they have been doing the various studies of uh, river courses and the distilling program should be engaged very soon. We've begun to do some overhanging tree cutting. That is our responsibility annually. Um, we have engaged that plan. What we want to do is appeal to members of the public who also have a very important um, responsibility as well. You are a residence owner, you own a piece of property. Um, please, we are appealing to you right now ahead of the Atlantic um, hurricane season to do the necessary in preparing your property for the um, showers which will come. So now is the perfect time to begin clearing of your drains, cutting of the overhangings and doing the, the necessary preparations for the Atlantic hurricane season. On our end, um, we are doing our part, but the shared responsibility that we want citizens to be very conscious of as we move very close, closer to the, the start of the hurricane season. That was Communications Officer in the Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor, Shannon Laborn. The government of St. Lucia has announced the re-establishment of a football task force to aid with the development of the sport. The announcement was made by Minister for Youth Development and Sports, Honorable Edmund Estefan, at the sitting of the House of Assembly on Tuesday. The decision was made after fruitful discussions with the St. Lucia Football Association, Inc., SLFA, for the Ministry of Youth Development and Sport. Honorable Estefan noted that the government is aware that FIFA's statutes of operations restrict third-party influence and does not want to contravene. However, the minister indicated that the government understands that it plays a pivotal role in creating an enabling environment for the sport. It was agreed that the relationship between the government of St. Lucia through the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports and the SLFAA will be strengthened through the re-establishment of the Football Task Force, which was organized a couple of years ago, comprising the government, the Ministry of Sports, the SLFAA, business partners, private sector and independent individuals. The task force will be charged with the responsibility of suggesting ways in which the relationship between the SLFAA the footballers and the general public can be strengthened for the ultimate goal of restoring confidence and making football a more exciting and beautiful game. The focus of the task force will be to implement more football matches using a two-tier system, including the relegation and promotion of teams. It is anticipated that with this new shift, football in St. Lucia can move towards a semi-professional league system in accordance with international norms. The government of St. Lucia fully embraces this global idea and has pledged to continue its infrastructure development program on some of our playing fields around the island. This would create the conducive environment to host local, regional and international games on world-class facilities. Honorable Estefan expressed confidence that the improvement of playing facilities will solidify St. Lucia as a lucrative sports tourism destination. A prize-giving ceremony was held last week at Alias Process to reward participants of the Francophony Poetry and Poster Competitions. The competitions form part of activities held to commemorate Francophony Month, held in March annually to celebrate the shared linguistic heritage based on the French language. Somebody Mark has the details. St. Lucia's linguistic heritage, based on the French language, is celebrated annually during Francophonie Month. Students are encouraged to not only learn the French language, but also participate in Francophonie competitions to help sharpen and display their linguistic abilities. 2021 was no exception. During the month of March, La Organisation Internationale de la Francophonie, OIF, hosted a calendar of activities including the Francophonie Poetry Competition. The Francophonie Awards ceremony was held on April 30 at the Alliance Française to reward participants of the Francophonie Poetry and Poster Competitions. Marcia Centurion Laurent, national correspondent to the OIF, spoke on the theme under which this year's celebrations were held. As you know, 
The theme chosen for this year's observance was Femme Francophone, Femme Resiliente. And this theme was chosen in order to highlight the challenges faced by women and to celebrate their strength and resilience in the face of crisis. The theme is quite fitting for today's activity because you two students have demonstrated great resilience in the face of the pandemic. You have had to deal with the impact of COVID-19 on your education. You have had to transition to online learning, physical school, back to online learning, back to physical school. And you have done all of this with so much grace. And in the midst of all of this turmoil, you took up the challenge to participate in the Francophonie competitions that were held this year. Crystal Autremont, Regional Councillor of Cooperation at the French Embassy, stressed on the importance of Francophonie celebrations. But Francophonie is just not one day, it's not just one week, it's not just one month, it's every day. It's learning a new language, becoming better in the language, and also learning about another culture and the values associated with this language. So today, I want to give a special thanks to all the teachers and also the Teachers Association who are on board every day to have the young St. Lucian, the young Caribbean, learn a modern language and learn French in particular. A certificate of participation was given to each student who participated in the competitions. The winners of the poetry competitions were as follows. Fourth place, teacher Dovel. Third place was awarded to Maya Fossois. In second place, Kiana Charles. And the winner of the Francophonie competition was Carnegie Paul of the Leon Hess Comprehensive Secondary School. Participants of the 2020 poster competition were also awarded, given the OIF's inability to do so last year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. From the Government Information Service, I'm Humidi Mark. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquiole. If you are in receipt of an abnormally high bill, it is highly possible that you have a leak. That leak may not always be visible. Before you contact Wasco, conduct a do-it-yourself test. 1. Record your meter reading. 2. Do not use water for 30 minutes to 1 hour. 3. Take another meter reading. If the reading changes, you have a leak. Contact a plumber to identify and fix the leak at the earliest. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, Wasco. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquior. Monsieur Ta Janelle, Monsieur Mesdames, Département qui est responsabilité, Reformation en gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS, Assemblée Pi Télévision Nationale PIA, NTN, Capositou Nouvelle Aquior, Capositou Primus Hutchinson. Le gouvernement a considéré pour établir un système pour public la paye taxe propriétaire qui est plus simple et qui a adressé diverses nécessités des affaires propriétaires à des paroisses. En présentation, le budget 2021 pour vendre, le premier ministre de l'Ontario, l'honorable Alain Chasney, a annoncé que le système de taxe nouveau sala, qui est révisé, est capable pour encourager les compliances qui sont plus significant et qui ont plus de bénéfices pour le gouvernement. Par des cas réduits à ce degré qui ont individu ni pour payer propriétaires. Le Premier ministre Chasse a déclaré que quand un gouvernement qui est très concerné, il a déjà envoyé l'implémentation du système nouveau sala et plutôt ça, il a bâillé les citoyens et les citoyens ont un grand soulagement à ce paiement de taxes propriétaires. Ça a été fait pour trois années. À commencement, il a fait pour trois années et le gouvernement a encore ajouté une autre année de soulagement. Enfin, un grand soulagement sala était en place depuis l'année 2017 ou 2021. En considération des gros trois cassements que le malade de corona a pesé à sur la famille avec mettre propriétaire, le gouvernement a proposé pour envoyer la présentation du système de taxes nouveau salaire pour juste le 1er janvier 2022. Programme des affaires et formations publiques et travail journaliste à l'Organisation Nations Unies 
qui a offert un étonnement pour les journalistes qui ont renforcé renforcer capacité et qui ont engagé des informations publiques pour connaître plus en affaire de crime et sécurité et de justice, particulièrement en bas de la situation de maladie corona. Le programme a aidé pour les journalistes pour trouver des informations qui sont reliables en considération des de rôles qui sont très importants qui les médias qui ont joué en façon loi avec diverses règles qui ont formé à la société. Ça a fait pour plusieurs raisons. Par exemple, la ligne de l'information qui a sorti, qui n'a pas dit la vérité, a fait expressement pour troubler le monde public. Et ça a augmenté en pile ces choses-là. Parmi l'autre problème, c'est en pile à ces informations très difficiles pour le public généralement comprendre parce que c'est aussi tellement technique. Alors, et j'ai avenu très nécessaire pour les journalistes de suivre des gros étonnements qui ont placé à de meilleures positions pour passer ces informations là de une façon qui est plus facile pour le public la comprendre. Par conséquent, un lot de monde qui a servi le service média social à de une façon qui est très dangereuse et aussi qui a apporté un lot de chance pour les autres là, ces journalistes là ne pour bien capable pour servir les informations qui doivent être et pour des gros capacités ces informations qui pas porté plus mal tête et souffrance à des pandémies qui a fait tellement dommage pour cette public. Nations Unies très concernées qui les mal et avec les criminels en ces pays qui même organisation qui a pris l'avantage à ce mauvais maladie ça là pour essayer de détruire et fort gouvernement et pour placer santé les citoyens en risque. Durant cette étonnement ça là les participants à apprendre manière ces crimes ça là qu'a fait et qu'a qui meilleure façon pour présenter le rapport à ce Parmi en même temps, il y a aussi qu'à apprendre une manière pour servir l'information à savoir effectivement par des gens pour tirer, pour protéger ces informations, ces sources-là, ces informations à la santé. C'est un institut de recherche pour le crime et la justice en Nation Unie qui a produit des goûts et tout le monde. Mardi qui passe, le 4e jour en mois de mai 2021, le ministère de la Santé a enregistré 12 cas neufs de maladies corona. Il a sorti à un total de 175 tests qui fait être le 30 avril pour le 2e en mois de mai 2021. Tous ces individus ont été trouvés examinés en yon clinique. Ils ont aussi été entrés en quarantaine par un autre aspect pour les résultats. Arrangement j'ai fait pour placer yo à la chambre par Koyoyon pour rester et quand même de Uh, minis, les officiers et ministres qui ont cherché pour les gens qui ont été contactés. Le ministère de la Santé aussi recevoir une confirmation qui 8 individus qui ont trouvé un guérison et qui ont été cas de COVID qui est actif pour les gens. Présentement, il y a des qui ont été critiques qui ont reçu un traitement à l'hôpital. Ça a été le mot de la corona en population cette ici pour 4585. Depuis le 3 e en mois de mai 2021, en total de 24 473 individus qui ont reçu la vaccine contre le corona et 4 982 qui ont pris la deuxième dose de la vaccine. Mais que le service de la vaccine a continué à vivre ce complexe-là, c'est aussi le Wellness Center à Belleville, aussi le Wellness Center à Les Etangs et qu'on s'y a dénué Mother's Preschool pour la population généralement pour recevoir la deuxième dose de la vaccine. Comme des habitudes, le ministère de la Santé a encouragé tout le monde pour toujours laver la main et que ça avant, et bien le service sanitaire, qui est un service de distance contre la loi, c'est un service de masse pour couvrir la bouche, le nez, le bâton, pour rester loin de la personne qui n'a pas et si vous trouvez la loi, allez au tiers docteur. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons trouvé la loi. Je vous remercie pour regarder. On va avoir une invitation pour gérer plus moi encore si Dieu conserve la vie. On va présenter l'autre nouvelle. Après la présent, on va vous présenter tout le journal. Merci à Pearl Primus. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.